Is it time? Son. My sock. My foot. It's so itchy. It's so itchy. Hello, chat. More of a white girl? I know. I know, right? We have so there's so much to talk about, guys. I have so much Ada, to talk about. Ada. Baby's first white claw? X. <laughs> I guess thank you for the resub. No, it's true. I never had a, a white claw before because I can tell you specifically why is because I don't like seltzer. So, hello. Hello, Arcus and Buddha and Meow Mix and Neon. Hello. Joey is here. Hello, Beaver. Hola. Oh, my arms hurt so bad. I did arms day on Friday and I'm still recovering. Yes, I'm, I'm spooky mode activated. It's because it's, it's getting close to Halloween season. You're very sore. How is it going? You're like in the shit right now, aren't you? Like the shit. Not just any old shit, but the shit. Additional shit is on the way. I'm leaving. Good. Run for the hills. Don't come back. It's not safe there. Like town wiped off the map shit? Yeah. The biggest shits. <laughs> Wait. That sounds bad. Hi, guys. Did I miss anybody? I see Frosties a lot in there. Holebound. Bagak. It's been a wild ride for people down south, I can tell you that much. I uh, I purposely have not looked up any pictures of it because it makes me sad. <laughs> Which sounds really stupid, right? Like, that just sounds completely stupid. Be like, ugh. I don't look at pictures of disasters because it makes me sad. Like, the people that actually have to live it. I'm sure they're feeling sad too, right? But I'm like, eh. But I can't help. It's a problem. This is a literal shit because guess where all the poop ends up when it floods? In your yard. In the road. On the cars. <laughs> yeah, once, when I was living in Arizona, we had a typh- Is it typhoon out there? What is it? Not typhoon. What is it? What do they call that? When the desert gets lots of rain. No, it wasn't a hurricane. No, it wasn't a hurricane. Tsunami. Nope, wasn't a tsunami. I'm in the desert. We're in the desert. Flash flood. I mean, yeah, it was a flash flood, but monsoon. It was monsoon season. I don't seek out pics, but it's also not avoiding either shit sucks. So who would have thought it flood in the mountains, right? Holy shit. Um, it was monsoon season, and we had a flash flood, and my car floated down the road, which is ironic, because I called it the Great White Whale, and, uh, we were getting, like, notifications from, like, the police, and they're like, uh, d just, if your car got flooded on the inside, you need to clean that, because, <laughs> yeah, who would have thought the desert's very bad at absorbing water? The very driest place is really bad at absorbing water. It's crazy. I think a mold, moldy Fubi would feel at home, though. Well, it was funny because, like, I had already blown the engine on it. So, that's why I was parked at a friend's house in, like, a gully. Because that was the closest spot to get it away from the highway. Because the engine was blown on it. And I couldn't afford a, a tow truck. So. <laughs> I was eating Bracky and the TV showed the news storm. And a lady who was staying at that hotel because she was out of her home just looked at it so sad. Like, God, that's so fucked up. That's just so fucked up. It's October. Like, I don't know. Maybe I'm remembering wrong. But I feel like hurricane season was like... May to July? Isn't that when normal hurricane season was? Don't blow in your engine. That's what the exhaust systems were. Well, it was like... Well, it's funny because I, I started the car... It, like, because it was like a whole bunch of us. Because this was funny now, right? Like, so... Like, the, the, the video of my car floating down the street went to the group chat. So then, like, everyone, like, gathered around my car and I started it. And then it, like, just shot, like, so much water out of the exhaust pipe. I'm in October now. The window keeps getting bigger because climate change. I hate that. Labor Day is the usual big ones. Suck on your engine. I do not want to suck on my engine. It's just crazy. 
I'm currently getting ready to leave for work. Nothing like seeing the equivalent of your paycheck just sitting there and knowing that the legal implications would suck more than just dealing with another two weeks of BS. I'm not sure what that means, but I hope you're okay. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about second hurricane season. Those snowbirds are not going to take this well. Just use a plunger on the cylinders. But one of the cylinders was in pieces, so there was no hope. A singular white claw. Singular, yeah. It was my first white claw, and so far my last white claw. Yeah, I threw a rod. I threw a rod, and then that's, that's, I had to gimp it back to some place that wasn't the highway. Which, let me tell you, was very loud. It's not going to run an engine with the rod in, in, in the middle of the cylinder. Um, but yeah, so the water was really the least of its problems. Let's be honest with you. Let's, let's be honest with the car right now. I was in the floods to Woomba had about a decade ago. The water went, whoa, from a near dry storm water gully to six feet over the bridge in about 10 minutes. Jeez, that's terrifying. Didn't really get too many hurricanes last year. I thought we had, like, one big one last year. Didn't we? I think the other problem, too, is, like, everything gets reported on. Not that that's a bad thing, but I think it kind of just makes people feel like things are, like, way more rapid fire than it actually is. No? No big storms last year? Wow. Okay. Well, that's good. Really? Not one big storm last year? There, There's a hurricane gonna hit France? A hurricane in France. Not that hit anything. Oh, okay, okay, okay. White claws came out after I had to quit drinking. Are they good? I mean, I don't like seltzer. It was fine. Um, it it was more the fact that like I I am glad I had alcohol to get through the party, that I think made it taste better. <laughs> I would have had a second one. Had I not trying, not been trying to remain professionally appropriate, <laughs> because I wanted, I wanted to leave the party very much. It was, it was, it was, it was a. Uh... No, that was the year before. Wow. And since twenty twenty two, that a big hurricane hit anything in the U S. I ain't hit Fort Myers. Kate Cabral, kick some ass, V. Thank you, Otter. Wow. I really thought we had a big hurricane incident last year, though. Maybe it was just the wildfires. Just Google hurricane hit France? Question mark. <laughs> it's going stronger as it barrels. Oh, former Hurricane Kirk moving towards Europe. Damn, not even Europe is safe now, guys. I said hello. Hello, hello. So, yeah, so by weekend, hello. Um, yeah, so basically, um, a co-worker um, who hadn't seen me in a while went like, Hey, I'm having, like, a little party for my kid. Like, do you want to come and hang out? Like, it's really chill. Like, it's not that, you know, it's it's chill. Like, it's his birthday party, but, like, don't worry. Like, there will be adults there. Like, I'm not going to, like, invite you over with a bunch of little kids. And, uh... Well, I wasn't, I wasn't expecting there to be alcohol, but I don't know how many Wisconsin birthday parties you've been to, Arcus. That's relatively standard in my neck of the woods. So, like, all right. There. So, like, I go there. She gives me her address because I didn't know where she lived. You know, and, like, I've worked with her for a while, so it wasn't, like, that big of a deal. So I, like, show up. I'm, like, fine, whatever. I'll show up. And, uh, and I got, I got the kid a birthday present because I'm, like, I don't really know what the, like, social thing is here. Like, do I get the kid a present? She didn't say not to, but she didn't say I had to. So then I was, like, you know, so I, I just got him, like, a little sticker book, right? Like, a six-year-old boy, like, stickers, right? So I get to her house. I get to her house and it is in this bougie gated neighborhood. And I am like, oh shit. Arcus probably lives here. That was my first thought. But then, so it's in this bougie gated neighborhood. <laughs> and I'm like suddenly panicking. Cause like, I wear like nice clothes, but it was like 
jeans and like tennis shoes you know what i mean but it was like a button-up blouse you know i like put on makeup and crap oh shit i'm a class trader now aren't i yeah that's what it felt like right like i felt way i felt bad being <laughs> like i was gonna call the police on myself because i didn't belong there right so i get to the door and it's like and, and they they're like oh yeah come on in and they have like law decor they have like like garden grasses like the big tall like grasses you see at like golf courses and stuff and like like a really fancy like crystal like solid wood crystal door i i like i it probably feels super autistic for me to like recognize these types of details when i'm in like full panic mode but like they did not have flamingos no 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 <laughs> so like they let me in and they're high small <laughs> So they let me in and she's like, oh, you brought a present. That's so great. I'm like, yeah, it's, you know, it's just something small. It's like, you know, don't get too excited. Right. And she goes, just put it in the formal dining room. We don't use that for anything else. Just drop in the formal dining room, put your bag in there, put your coat in there, blah, blah, blah. Everybody's out on the deck. And I'm like, okay, there's a formal dining room <laughs> that they do not use and a deck. And a deck. I don't know why. The deck was more... Yeah. <laughs> Joey. They were all very nice. No one was, like, rude to me. Everyone was very pleasant. Very... Is hospitable the word? And then... So I'm, like... there, And their kitchen has, like, a huge island with, like, the, the rack. You know, where you, they have, like, the rack that hangs down and their pots and pans hang off of, like, in the island, right? And they have, like, a gas stove and, like, a really fancy fridge and stuff. Being in the kitchen sink. And uh, she's like, yeah, everybody's out on the deck. Like, the kids the kids are playing, right? What is a white claw? Hold on, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. She's like, there's white claws and water in the, in the cooler and stuff. And she's like, and I look and I'm like, oh, wow, there's a bounce house. I'm like, dang, you, you rented a bounce house. That's, that's cool. You know, and she's like, oh, no, that's, that's just, we've had that. It's a bounce house. It's a whole ass bounce house. Now, like, granted, it wasn't like professional quality bounce house. It was a little smaller. I'm sure it's like a bounce house from Costco, but it's a bounce house. They just own a bounce house. Who just owns a bounce house? <laughs> they own a bounce house. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, okay, okay. It's fine. Everything's fine. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to grab a white claw because I need. I'm like, I shouldn't because I'm like, I have to remain professional, right? Where I'm in a, I'm in a, I'm in a, a social environment where like people's opinions kind of matter, right? I'm not financially secure enough for a bounce house, no. So, so like, I'm like digging through their cooler and there's like IPAs and like, like, small brewery beers and like a whole like there's new glaris and then like just all these like relatively more like there's no bud light right there's no coors in this cooler it's like you're paying you're paying 25 bucks for a 12 pack kind of beers right and then i finally dig it down enough and find the white claw <laughs> It's Wisconsin. Everyone brings booze to a kid's party. Everyone. That's standard procedure. That's not even weird to me. That's like, that's standard. The kid is six. They're old enough now. <laughs> so then like, so then they, so, so everyone's kind of chit chatting. I'm kind of like off in the distance. I don't know if you guys know this. I am absolutely horrific at small talk. I would rather toaster bath and small talk like i am horrible at it it makes me sick like it is literally terrible right i'm awful at it i cannot i can't professionally small talk i can't socially small talk you i will suck. literally oh <gasps> <laughs> that's so rude i do suck it's time for your first bud light no it's your time for your first ipa your first microbrew ipa can't believe i just gotta use suck so so yeah i um <laughs> and i get my white claw and everyone's chit-chatting and i'm like kind of like trying not to implode upon myself 
And and the mom's like, okay, guys, we're gonna have the silly string war. And I was like, what? She has 30 bottles of silly string. 30. I'm not even, I'm not even exaggerating. She had like 30 bottles of silly string. So all these kids got multiple cans of silly string. And then like she started passing them out to the adults. And I'm like, I am half a white claw in. I had nothing for lunch. I had nothing for dinner. I'm already feeling buzzed and you just handed me a can of silly string. What? This egg, this cannot end. This is not going to end well. I'm like, I can't shoot the adults. What if I can't shoot the adults? Right? Because that's weird. But I can't shoot the kids either. Because I'm a whole ass adult. Like, what the fuck do I do? What do I do? So then I'm, like, standing there with a silly string. And then, like, I'm, like, I'm going to wait for someone to attack me. And then, yeah, I should have just turned in and just shot myself in the face with it. That would have been super normal. Makes me gag. So I was, like, I'm going to wait for an attack. And then I'll just Irish goodbye time. <laughs> so I, I was, like, I'll just wait for an attack. And then I will, I will, I will just go get revenge. And then that's, at least it's, like, you know, it's it's not a premeditated attack on a child, right? So, like, some little kid shoots me in the foot, and I, you know, I shoot them in the face, as you do. And, like, everyone has a bunch of fun. And, like, eventually they run out of silly strike. And I'm just like, I'm like, oh, my God, like, the geese are going to eat this and die. <laughs> it's, like, all over the grass and stuff. I'm like, okay. So then the my coworker, the mom, she brings out a, a, a charcuterie board and puts it on the table. Destroy the child. Puts it on the table. And, like, I'm hungry as fuck. I am buzzed and hungry as fuck at this point, right? <laughs> and I'm looking at it, and it's, like, apples and grapes and stuff. But then there's, like, prosciutto. There's super-duper aged cheese. Like, it had to have at least been a year and a half aged cheese, if not more. It had crystals in it. It had, I don't even know what the other meats were, but they were like the dried, you know, like the semi-dried, dry-aged meats and stuff and like all this stuff. I'm like, so that would be banned from every McDonald's playground. Oh, I love prosciutto, dude. I ate the shit out of prosciutto. I can't afford prosciutto on the regular. I'm taking advantage of that. So then I'm like, I'm like eating. I'm like trying to remain normal. I'm like having conversations. I'm trying to eat as much as much of this expensive ass food as I can. And uh, I get caught between these two guys. And they're very much suburban guys, right? We're at, sorry, I'm trying to fix my sock. We're at a six year old's birthday party, right? Saturday night. This is sad. This is, this was my Saturday night, guys. Six year old's birthday party with a bounce house. And uh, all the guys there, <laughs> except one, had polos on. And like, they're casual dress pants you know what i mean like they're not khakis and they're not jeans but they're not like they're like fabric but they're like they're not they're not jeans slacks slacks okay they have their slacks on so yeah 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 so they have they have polos and slacks on for a six-year-old's birthday party at, at saturday night right hardcore and I get between these two guys. And again, everyone was extremely nice, extremely friendly. Like, they included me in conversations. I have no ill will towards any of these people at all. It was just the whole situation was crazy to me. So, I'm trying to figure out how to describe this guy's yard. A beautiful house. Beautiful yard. Right? Very expensive. This house had to have at least been $850,000. Like, at least. Right? So their yard is on the small side, though. Like, I'm trying to think of like comparable. Maybe a quarter of a football field, maybe, like lengthwise, but definitely not widthwise. It was smaller than that. One point seven million. A yard outside my tax bracket. It's small. Your yard is great. I mean, you probably displayed like what twenty local species with it, right? Yeah, so it's, it's, it's small. I could, it's smaller than my yard and I have a small yard, right? Maybe, maybe about the same size, but I think it was smaller. 
and these two guys are talking and I somehow accidentally got in the middle of them. So I'm, I'm automatically involved in this conversation by, by social decree, right? And they're talking and the one guy goes, oh yeah, like beautiful y'all, sorry. He's like, oh yeah, beautiful lawn, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, by proximity. And he's like, oh yeah, I just mowed it. He's like, he's like, I was thinking about getting like a self-propelled lawnmower now that we have such a big yard. And I'm like kind of dying on the inside, right? Like it, this is happening. Cause I, I grew up on a farm. Like I have a small yard now, but I grew up on a farm. This is not a large yard <laughs> by any means, right? So they start chit-chatting. They're like talking shop about lawnmowers. I do not have a self-propelled lawnmower, by the way. I, 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 I heave that thing up a hill. And uh, he's like, yeah, I'm thinking about getting a self-propelled. He's like, well, you know, <laughs> like looking at the size of this yard, like it almost looks like you need like a riding lawnmower. And like, I'm almost done with my white claw at this point, right? I have like three pieces of cheese and a half an apple. And I have, I have a white claw. <laughs> so I go, what? Just like exactly like that. I just go, what? <laughs> I was so embarrassed because the guy looked, the guy looked shocked that I would even respond that way. <laughs> and he's like, well, he's like, he's like, I, I think you would have to get like a zero turn for this yard because there's got, it's got two trees in it. I was like, what? <laughs> and I'm like, and I'm like, and he's like, what? What? I mean, you, you wouldn't? And I'm like, I'm like, zero turn lawnmower for this? And he's like, it's, it's a large yard. I'm like, it's not though. <laughs> <laughs> like it's not i'm like this is and then the other guy's was like he's like well yeah like when i mow it my my fitbit says i've walked two and a half miles i was like well yeah i'm like because you're going back and forth i guess that makes sense and he's like he's like well yeah so like a riding lawnmower would be good and i'm like i don't really know if that's worth the money for it though and then and then they just both looked at me and i realized i made the mistake of being conscientious with my money around people that don't have to be conscientious with their money <laughs> and they the one guy i just i yeah they let the peasant yeah so then like they're just like oh yeah maybe i guess and then like they just kind of like whittled away they kind of <laughs> away and i'm like i wanted to get another white claw at that moment <laughs> I know I'm poor. <laughs> it was the worst, dude. Oh, it's terrible. Be out of yourself as a house poor to the lawn dance. No. Sounds like poor in here. <laughs> Me that turned that silly string on herself. Yep. So. But yeah, so I was talking. Yeah, they kind of like, they left me there. And, I, and then they're like, we ordered Domino's pizza because the child wanted Domino's pizza. But, like, we kind of hate Domino's pizza. But at least it's not that expensive and stuff. And I'm like, what's wrong with Domino's pizza? <laughs> like, they were just shitting on Domino's pizza the entire time. But, like, their kid liked Domino's pizza. Right? And I was like, Domino's pizza is fine. Like, he's six. What are you going to get him? Like, you're going to go, like, to, a, to, like, a stone... You know, like a place with like a legit pizza oven and get a six-year-old a pizza? What? Like, he's six. He's six. And then there was like another mom there. And like, she only spoke to her kid in Spanish. Right? And I was like, oh, dang. Like, oh, we got like, you know, I'm like, this is not... The first person I knew that knew Spanish and like taught their kids Spanish, right? And then she's talking with somebody else. This is the problem is I don't talk to anybody. I listen to other people's conversation. I'm kind of a creepy person that way. <laughs> so, so like she's talking to somebody else and then they're like, wow, that's neat that like you're fluent in Spanish and you're teaching your son. She's like, oh, I'm not fluent in Spanish. And they're like, but you're speaking to him in Spanish. And she's like, yeah, we, I just don't want to speak to him in English. And I was like, what? What? 
So she just decided one day that the kid needs to learn a second language. So she learned just enough Spanish so that she could yell at her kid in Spanish to teach him Spanish. Is what I gathered from that conversation. Uh, it's it was it was so weird. Her kid was nuts too. He was just like pile driving. Like I don't know. I mean, I I'm a, I'm assuming some of you know what six year old boys do, because I think some of you at some point were six year old boys. But if anyone has seen a six year old boy from the outside watching the six year old boy, they are insane. They are absolutely positively insane they were like smashing into each other they were like at the top of the of the bouncy house like leaping off the top of the bouncy house just like screaming and then they'd fall and they'd hit the ground and then they get back up on the bouncy house and do it again and i'm like having a panic attack these aren't even my kids right like i don't they, these aren't even mine and i'm freaking out because they're gonna they're gonna break themselves and they're like they're like yeah let's go and they're like and then they're like on these crazy swings and they're like almost swinging each other into like directly into a huge ass tree like as hard as possible and I'm like, I, like, I needed that second white claw. I just couldn't bring myself to do it because I did have to drive home. And I think the amount of white claws I needed to get through that without having, like, some kind of existential crisis would have made me not be able to drive. <laughs> I have one of those. It's an adventure. I feel that way going to my parents' house. They have a private road with two other houses with equal sized yards. Meanwhile, I crawl out of my hole in the wall shack. It do feel like that, though. You can throw yourself off objects as a kid? Usually into other kids? No. Like a Bethesda game. How was be the normal one at the party? Right? I used to jump from a 20 foot loft when I was younger. Man, boys are crazy. You guys want to know when I was a kid in Asgard? I took a bowl from the kitchen and I filled it with water. And I tried to make soup with the sun. Like I'd fill it with like grass and rocks and stuff. And I would sit outside and I would stare at this bowl and watch it like warm up, quote unquote, and try to make soup. I also would try to sing to the animals and try to become a Disney princess that way. Those were the things I did. My parents had lawn darts. We used to play a game called Run for Your Life. You stood in a closed circle and threw a lawn dart as high as you could, and then Run for it, you Jesus. I used to let my brother try to beat me up, and I would laugh at him and tell him he wasn't hurting me. Oh, I did not become a Disney princess, no. Can I get a Hoya? Thank you, Neko, for the prime sub. Listen, you rode horses. I don't want to hear it. No, okay, for real. Can we be for real with that, though? Like, I did. Yes, absolutely. However, I was not allowed to ride my horse whenever I wanted to. I was not allowed to interact with my horse whenever I wanted to. My my mom had to be with me at all times. Even when I was, like, 17, 16, 17. So, like, if my mom wasn't up for, like, interacting with horse, I could not interact with horse. I could not go brush her. I could not go, like, clean her stall. I could not, like, I could feed her. But, like, I couldn't go, like, out and ride her whenever I wanted to. Like, my mom had to be with me. And, like, there were many times where she just did not want to deal with that right now. So I could not do anything with my horse. And then she sold my horse. And then the person wanted to sell the horse back, and my mom said no, and then they auctioned my horse off, and I'm pretty sure she ended up at a glue factory in Mexico. If we're gonna be real right now. You had a horse? I did. I have had several horses. Well, of course, you wouldn't leave a kid with a horse till you said 16 or 70. I was allowed unsupervised with cows and horses at like 12. I could be with the cows just fine. I could sit in the... They would leave me in the cow field at like 6. Six, seven, eight. They would leave me in the cow field. That was fine. But horses was a no-go. She's so enjoyed my fourth grade eating in his Elmer's Clue. Hi, souls. I had... So I had a horse who was a Tennessee walker. His name was Tango. Um, Unfortunately, he had... He had an abscess in his coffin bone. Um, So he had... I couldn't ride him because he needed to have... 
There was a lot of intensive care with that. So we and so we did end up selling him, but we sold him to somebody who like rehabilitates horses. I love that movie, Ammonia. You have no idea how many times I watched that movie. I love that movie. It's such a good movie. It's one of my favorite movies. <laughs> Imagine Smolby standing sadly in a cow pasture. Um, so he got sold to someone that could like because it was if if anyone knows anything about horses, the coffin bone is like I don't know how to do this without, like, a drawing. Here, wait. Let me just get a drawing. Here we go. I don't think this is graphic. I don't... I don't... I wouldn't call this graphic. Where, where did... Wait, where did it save to you? Where did you save to, drawing? All files? There it is. Oh, wow. It's so crunchy. Okay. Oh, because it's tiny. All right. Where do I put you? Real quick, V, you're an indie, right? I Yeah, I am an indie. That is correct. What can I not answer? Oh fuck you, small. I was like, why would you ask me that? You of all people should know that. <laughs> I've only seen Brother Bear once. Alright, so like you can't see it because this is super duper crunchy picture. Um, but the coffin bone is not is labeled the pedal bone here. Okay, so it's it's you can't see me pointing. Um that pointy bone near the bottom of the hoof is also called the coffin bone. Which would be like the cow's toe, right? The cow. The horse's toe. Um, so there's that line that you see that little like black hole almost. And then there's that line right there. So my horse stepped on something and it caused a cut which then caused an infection that went all the way up through the bottom of the hoof into that little, like, black hole, which then caused an infection in that bone. Joey, what the fuck? Um, <clears throat> so as you can imagine, that's very difficult for a horse who needs to be standing all the time to recover from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do horses have to keep moving or they die like sharks? No, I tried to save you. I know. I'm sorry, Commissar. You try so hard. You really do. Yeah, so, like, horses can lay down, but they can only lay down for, like, an hour or so a day because their organs will literally crush themselves. Um, <clears throat> so, basically, what we did was we, we drained the abscess, and then he was on antibiotics for a while, and then we had to put him in, like, a special boot that had... Oh my gosh, my throat's all messed up. Hold on. <coughs> we had him in a special boot that had, like, a soft sponge in it, but then we'd keep, like, Epsom salts in there, so that would, like, keep it clean and stuff. But it it just... That's one of those injuries that just take a really long time to heal because they have to walk on it um, because the actual bone was messed up. And so, and so, like, the best thing for him would have been to, be like, be in a padded stall for, like, several months. And we didn't have a padded stall for him. And, like, he had to go out to pasture and blah, 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 blah. So we ended up selling him to somebody who had a padded stall and had medical experience. We're, like, able to take care of him to give him, like, the best, the best situation for him. What's your favorite horror story? I, that's a good question. Hmm. I think my favorite horse story, and I was pissed at the time. Um, so I had my my last horse, the one that got sold at auction. Um, she was I don't know, it's like feels messed up to say I have a favorite, but she was my favorite. And um I was like 17, I think, or 18. And it was 5 o'clock in the morning, and my mom is at my bedroom door, like, banging on my door. And she's like, your horse got out, your horse got out, your horse is over at the neighbor's. Because my horse was fat. Back to the hoof issue, right? 
My horse was so fat. We won't talk about why. Because I don't know if my mom still watches my videos or not. What? <laughs> um, but you see the 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 pointy bone? Um, the back of it was there was so much weight on that round bone that's touching the pointy bone. Um, that that round bone was actually forcing down through the bottom of her hoof. Um, it wasn't super graphic. It wasn't, like, super bad, right? It wasn't to the point where, like, she's, like, has a broken hoof. Um, but, like, she needed to lose weight, right? Um, my mom had a pretension of giving them grain whenever possible. Um, and, and it's really not good for a horse. And, and she would always put them out on grass. Um, shockingly, grass is actually really bad for horses. <laughs> um, so we had her in the round pen, which was dirt. So she couldn't eat grass whenever she wanted. Um, and then she was on a very strict diet to help her lose weight because she's too fat for her feet. Um, and the round pen had wooden planks, like, like in spirit. In, when they're trying to break him in the in the the fort, you know, like that. It was like that kind of round pen with like the plank fence, you know. We had a mare that was fed too much corn by the old owner, and it fucked up the frogs of her feet. We had to shoe her with rubber pad shoes. Yeah, dump better horse. Yeah, thank you, Gamma. We're, we're horsing today. Oh wow, it's just flipping me off. How rude. Yeah, the coffin bone. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so we, we grew our own hay and alfalfa too. It's just we would also put them out on pasture and then also give them hay and alfalfa. Which I didn't learn until I didn't learn until after I moved out of my parents' house that that is way too fucking much for them. That was way too much. Um, but yeah, so she was in a round pen that looked like the one from Spirit when he's in the fort and they're trying to break him. And she slammed right through that fence, took that fence out, ripped it down, and then ran all the way over to the neighbor's yard and was just sitting there eating grass. So I, I, it's like five in the morning, like the sun just came up. I threw out my boots. I'm like pissed because I was sleeping. <coughs> and I run out there and I'm so mad that I forget to grab a halter and a lead rope. And I'm, like, halfway out there. And, like, I can see her. I'm not running anymore because I can see her because she's just eating. And I'm, like, oh, okay, fatty, you know. <laughs> so I I walk out there and I'm, like, okay, it, it's it's time to come home now. And she's, like, nah, bro, I'm not going to come home. And I'm, like, it's it's time to come home now. And I'm, like, I, like, grab her head and I'm, like, <laughs> trying to, like, yank her home. <laughs> and she just, like, pulls her head away and goes back to eating. I'm, like. Oh, so I had to take off my sweatshirt. So I like have pajama pants. And I have to take off my sweatshirt. So I have like a t-shirt underneath. And I wrap the sleeves of the sweatshirt around like her neck. And then I have to like... And, and then she finally got the hint. Like, oh, there's something around my head. It's time to walk. So then I walked her back while I was with my sweatshirt around her head and I put her in the stall and my mom comes running out and she's like, where's the halter? And I'm like, it's on the hook. Yep. So, so she, she got so hangry that she blew through a fence to get some grass. What is your knowledge on horse foam? What do you mean horse foam? What is horse foam? The foamy sweat. I've never seen that myself. I've seen I've I've I mean I've seen horses sweat. I've never seen it foamy. I don't think. I I like I haven't seen foamy horse sweat. I've seen normal horse sweat. We had racehorses, so I've seen it. So it gets foamy if you're really pushing them, and they sweat a bunch. Oh, okay, yeah, no, I never, I never pushed my horses that far. We, were, it was very casual. We go trail riding and stuff. You never, it never like pushed them a super duper hard. Is horse foam a furry thing, right? Is it fascinating? It's, it's sticky. 
Horse sweat's sticky. My favorite was using the shedding blade in the spring, though. Oh, that was so satisfying. Oh, my God. <laughs> Argus just casually like, yeah, we had race horses. <laughs> Fucking. You probably have white claws at kids' birthday parties <laughs> in a bounce house. Basically, why you gotta wave and rub them down after races because it's foamy and they get cold. Yeah, yeah, it'd be really bad. So, like, if you're like pushing a horse really hard and they sweat and you let them get cold, I mean, it's just like runners, right? That's why after a marathon, runners get those uh, shiny tinfoil blankets. Um, it's it's so their body doesn't drop temperature so much because your muscles will cramp up. I've never made hun jerky. No, cold horse eats bad. Uh, my mom had a horse that would um, drink beer and eat marshmallows. Okay, so they gave me the emergency blanket and I didn't use it. God damn it, Arcus. You think you're too rich for the emergency blanket now? God damn. No, <laughs> I just want Simple straight spirit set. That's so Wisconsin. I hate it. Runner's body blah, 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 blah. runner's body's temporarily lose the ability to regulate temperature after a marathon. That makes sense. That's where you ride horse all day with meat in between horse and saddle, and it makes tricky. That sounds really gross, actually. Gotta <laughs> be gold fleck for him to use. Oh yeah, it do be gotta be like that. No, I have no reason to make hun jerky. Yeah, it's really gross. What? <laughs> That's so weird. Oh, yeah. Nah. Why would you do that? Right? That's what I'm asking. That's what I'm asking. Why would you do that? That's so gross. That's so gross. I don't want to eat horse sweat jerky. I also grew up, when I was a mini Valkyrie, we had mini horses, and that was the greatest thing ever. That that's that's that was, like, the true joy of horses, was having mini horses. Because, like, when you get big horses, um, they know they're bigger than you, and they don't give a shit about what you have to say, small fly. But, like, the mini horses, they were, like, you could, you could, you could push them around a little bit, right? Although mini horses are a lot like chihuahuas. And they are way more sassy and belligerent. But I love the mini horses. I would totally have a mini horse again. I think I'd have a mini horse over a big horse. Although I do miss riding. But I don't like caring for a big horse. <laughs> that makes sense. No, no, no. Like a miniature horse. Have you seen a miniature horse? Oh my god, are there are people in the chat that don't know about miniature horses. No, not a pony. They're smaller than ponies. They're so fucking cute. Look at this little shit. Look at this fuzzy little shit. I love them so much. Where's the picture? Oh, there it is. Look at that little shit. Look at him. Look at him. Fucking, that is a crunchy ass picture. They're so cute. I love them. Look at this little baby. Look at this little baby. Look at this baby. Look at him. Look at oh my god, he's big. A little baby over here. Oh my god, I'm gonna die. Oh! Ah! I need five. I need five of them right now. Oh. Adorable. Literally will cry. <laughs> it's so cute. They're so cute. They're also, like, insanely strong. Like, they can pull a cart with two full-grown adults on it and a bunch of, like... I don't want to use the word load because you guys are all 12. Like, you know, like, like have stuff in the cart, too. Um, I don't know how many horses came about. I don't know if there was, like, an offshoot from an... I don't know. I'm, I don't know if they were bred that way. I mean, I'm assuming, like, over time they were bred to be more small, but I don't know if they were, like, originally... 
I don't want to say fully loaded cart. I don't want... Yeah, there it goes. There it goes. Thank you, Mafia Mom. <laughs> My friend has a mini horse named Calvin and a lore troll. <laughs> I love that. My mom had a mini donkey. His name was Donkey. <laughs> I've only ever seen mini horses at circus. No. They're so cute, though. I love them. And they're so much easier to deal with. Because, like, you have a full-size horse and you're going to go clean the horse's hoof. You're only picking up that horse's hoof if they let you pick up that horse's hoof. Like, they're, they're, they have to let you. If they don't want you to pick it up, you're not, you're not picking it up. You're not going to be picking it up. But a miniature horse? You can pick it up. <laughs> Whether they want you to or not. Oh, yeah, no, the donkey is very stubborn. He was also in love with my mom's horse. We kept making jokes because my mom had a full-sized mare horse. And Donkey was absolutely positively enamored with her. Like, would follow her around the pasture. Like, would share his food with her. She was so, like, like indifferent to his existence. And he looked like a little lost puppy every time they were together. It was just, it was so sad. It was so sad. <laughs> Donkey! To quote a friend, if it looks unreal, it probably is unreal. So probably was bred like that. Yeah. Oh man, he's me. <laughs> big, big girl. He had a big wife who did not care about it. <laughs> poor, poor donkey. Wasn't even friend zoned. Big oof. Yeah. I don't know if that donkey and that horse can make babies. Because she was also big. She was, was she a quarter horse? She was a big haunt. She was a big haunt. She wasn't up. She wasn't a draft. I don't think. I don't think she was a purebred. So she might have had draft in her. <laughs> a lot of large horse breeds today have a relatively modern life. So many horses might be closer to older breeds. Still, probably intentionally bred. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. If a donkey and a dragon can, I don't want to see what. I'm just saying, like there would be a lot of logistics involved that I don't want to think about. <laughs> He was an intact donkey, too. Like, he was an intact man. That's probably why he didn't like other men. Like, he hated my dad. Hated him. Hated him. Tried to kick him so many times. Right in the family jewels. Manlets when they see a large woman. <laughs> It's true. That's exactly what it was like. It was so sad. He was so in love with her. Like life, don't get fun. <laughs> I'm trying to think about other weird horse stuff. I have weird. I have. I have funny goat stories. I'm trying to remember once because my mom's horse had training issues and I can't remember what happened, but she didn't want to listen to my mom anymore. And when my mom tried to ride her, she would try to like punt my mom off, right? Was she the one that broke my mom's wrist? No. Yes? No. Yes? No. <laughs> We've had a lot of horses. It has a stronger link to material inheritance, so this is more than you realize. Big women are attractive. <laughs> Gives you big son. Um, yeah, so, like, my mom's horse, I don't know, I don't remember what happened, but she suddenly decided that she didn't want to listen to anybody anymore. Have a good... Have a good sleep, small. Thank you for coming. I was going to say have a good stream, but you're sleeping and I'm streaming. Um, Yeah, so so my mom is like, well, you ride her. And I was like, oh, good. Great. Okay. Great. I'm like, you've trained like 19 horses and I'm, I'm, I'm on one, but okay. So they're like, you ride her. And then like, if, if you fall off, you won't get hurt. I'm like, okay. <laughs> All right. Because my mom had already broke a wrist falling off a horse. I mean, that's why I try to go for Talman. I need to bring back the glory to the family. 
So I I get on the horse and the horse does not want to listen and she's just like, you know, fuck you. She's yanking on the reins really hard. She's tossing her head. She's going wherever the hell she wants. So I'm like, okay, I don't really know what to do in this situation because I haven't really been on an on like a horse that doesn't want to be trained anymore, right? So I just like grab the reins and I not hard, just gently pull her head to the side and the horse has to go where the head is. So we literally went in circles for about 35 minutes until this horse got sick of going in circles in the field and then decided that I'm just going to listen to you because it's better than doing any more circles. I'm like, I don't know what else to do. My mom's like, are you serious? I'm like, I don't know what else to do and you're not giving me any help. So we're it's circles. I'm like, she's not bucking me off. She's not, she's not bouncing. She's not snorting. She's not kicking. I'm like, I'm just going to keep doing circles. <laughs> and we only went in one direction. So I'm sure her neck was very sore. I, oh yeah, that, that's really my, uh, my defining feature is that I can out stubborn people and horses. Apparently I can get very stubborn when I want to be. Heck yeah, wear them down. Yeah, because I like I'm not into breaking horses. Like I don't want to like starve them and then like ride them really hard to the point where like they can't function anymore, right? I'm like that. That's bad. I don't. I'm not into that. But I can be really fucking annoying. <laughs> Although I tried to do that with my horse, because my horse was she was a, a a POA, which is Ponies of America, but she was horse size. So. When I say pony, don't think like small little baby pony. Like she was horse size. She was very large for her breed, right? And uh, she, when I tried to do that with her, because I was like, this is amazing. I learned a new trick. My horse is stubborn as fuck. Now I know what to do. She was also incredibly more flexible than my mom's horse. So instead of just like walking in circles, she just bent her head all the way around and touched my boot with her nose and didn't move. And she would just sit there like that. And then I'd like pull her around the other way. Also just as flexible. And she'd just sit there with her nose on my boot. And I'm like, are you kidding me right now? <laughs> so then there was one point where I'm like, I don't know what else to do. And so I'm like, we're just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And my dad, my dad, because he's like, are you doing aerobics with your horse? Like, what are we doing? What are you doing right now? He's like, I just look out the window and you're just, she's just doing this. <laughs> she has, she has never. Oh, <laughs> father, please. Please, I'm already stressed out. I mean, she's making me look stupid, all father, please. I know how many times that horse has made me look stupid. Um... I, she has never bucked me off, though. She has tried. She has tried very hard to send me flying. I have been thrown off a horse, but not that one. And I I, I take pride in that because she has tried very hard to buck me off. Very hard. Are you winning me? Oh, my goodness. No, I got thrown off. Well, so, like, if you have never tacked up a horse before, you have to do... So, the the... The strap that goes around their like waist, their tummy, that is connected to the saddle, is called a, a a cinch. And you have to cinch your horse twice, especially ponies. <laughs> um, so this horse, I I was um, I was how old was I? Like twelve, I think. And my mom was like, tack up, you know, tack up your own horse. It wasn't even my horse. It was one of my mom's friend's horses that we they were boarding at our house. And, um, you know, she's like, tack up the horse. And so I put the saddle on him and blah, 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 blah. No, not like a, what, a branding. No, not like a branding iron. It's just a strap, like a saddle. Like you put the saddle on their back and then it's a strap that goes under their armpits in the front. Um, So you you pull it tight. But if they're smart. What horses will do, and this is every horse I've ever ridden has done this, is when you start pulling on the cinch, they'll take a very deep breath. Like, they'll go, because then the rib cage expands. And then you can only pull it so tight. Then as soon as they blow that air out, now that cinch isn't super tight anymore. Right? <laughs> so, I didn't, yeah, yep, see, 
<laughs> so you gotta so then you gotta do all your other stuff and then at the last second walk back over the cinch and cinch it up really hard really quick before they can breathe in again. <laughs> Every horse I've ever tacked up has done this. So I didn't do that with this horse because I didn't know. This was the first time I tacked up my own horse, right? So he he breathed in and I was like, okay, it feels tight because you got you to gotta stick your hand underneath it, right? So it's got to be tight, but you got to be able to stick your hand underneath. Because you don't want it too tight, obviously, because that's uncomfortable. <laughs> Circles for you. So I get on and he's you know we're trotting and i'm trying to sit the trot and everything and everything's like okay and then he decides i'm done now and i went no well, no we're not done now you're done when i say you're done so i'm like you know doing all the you know like you know and kind of bouncing a little bit in the saddle and kind of poking him with my heel and everything and literal spy movie moves right so and all of a sudden he does this like stupid little i i obviously didn't see it because i'm on his back and uh he does my mom said he did this stupid little hop and it was just enough momentum that literally it flipped the saddle to the side and it sent me all the way under so i was like underneath his tummy with his feet on the ground around me and then he did like this little like side skirt and then ran away and i was like freaked out i was like oh, oh, this anymore. because oh, like, i was perfectly fine he didn't step on me he didn't kick me i just fell like i just did this little like hop fall thing you know like a couple feet onto the dirt like everything was fine but i was also 12 years old and that was the first time i'd ever fallen off a horse and i'm like oh, i don't want to do this anymore i hate horses i want to go inside you know and my mom made me get back on the saddle <laughs> So she went, she went with me, we grab him, we grab him and like, should we go and we look, you know, we fix the saddle and we fix the cinch and she cinches him up and she goes, okay, time to get back on. I'm like, I don't want to get back on. She's like, you got to get back on the horse. So I got back on the horse and she made me sit a trot full around the round bed before she let me get off again. I was like crying the entire time. <laughs> Peek in the Ava unit. Yeah. So that was that was stressful. But I got back on the horse and I'm not I'm not afraid of horses. <laughs> That's the other thing is people are always afraid they have like their feet stepped on and like while it does hurt, if you stay calm, you're probably gonna be fine. Right? Cause I have been stepped on by draft horses. And I never broke a toe. Because normally at the time when they step on you, one, they're not actually trying to step on you. They just didn't know where your foot was. So they don't put their full weight down. And then two, if you don't freak out, the horses don't make any freaky sudden movements and like skin your toes off. Because I have to my mom. When she was young, um, she worked at a boarding stable. And I don't remember what kind of horse it was, but it was a show horse. It was a big show horse, she said, and he stepped on her foot, and I think this one was being malicious because it stepped on his foot and then, like, pulled, like, put his weight on it and, like, drug his foot off, you know, so he, like, stepped on it and drug, and it broke all five of her toes in her left foot. <laughs> My mom has been injured by so many horses. And then the psychopath finished her shift and then went home. That is what she did. She didn't go to a hospital until the next day when she couldn't get her boot back on to go back to work. Because there was so much swelling in her foot, she could not put on shoes. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Destroyed her foot. But I've been stepped on a lot by horses and I've never had that catastrophic. Because normally what you do is they step on you and they start putting weight on you. If you just, like, push your, your shoulder into their shoulder, you can kind of, like, force their weight off. And then they'll just get off of you because that's easy. That's easier than trying to destroy your foot. My mom's a psycho. <laughs> like, it's almost to a detriment, though. Because <laughs> there's been times... So, when my mom fell off her horse, which I believe was the Mustang she had, 
she fell off. I remember because it was me and then her friend and we were both watching while she rode and she fell off and she hit the dirt and it was relatively chill, right? Like it wasn't that big of a deal, much like mine. And she gets up and she sits right back down and we're like, you good? Because we weren't in the, we weren't even like, that's how like not dramatic it looked. We didn't even get into the round pen with her. Like we just, because a horse was like, bur, 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 bur. you know, it got what it wants. So it was just going to go find some grass. We didn't even like run in there, see if she was okay. Like that's how like not belligerent this looked. And she gets up and then sits back down. We're like, are you good? And she's like, oh, no. <laughs> and she, so we like go in there and she's like, I think, I think I sprained my wrist. And we look and like, if you look at your arm and how it's like straight, if you kind of like took... Like, if you took, like, the lasso tool on Photoshop and kind of just picked up, like, the first half of her arm and then kind of just twisted it a little bit to, like, the left and then slid it down. <laughs> That's what her arm looked like. <laughs> like, oh, that was gross. <laughs> and she's like, I just need a bag of peas. I just need some ice. It's fine. Like, she did not want to go to the hospital. Like, my dad, my dad, who also never goes to the doctor, forced her to go to the, to go to the hospital. Like, that's, that's how bad it was. <laughs> and she's like, I'm fine. I'm like, mom, you're really pale. Like, you're pale. Like, you're a different color <laughs> than you normally are. Because she's like, it doesn't hurt that bad. Gotta grab the frozen steak, not the piece. And then it turned out she had a compression fracture, which basically meant that she came down on her wrist so hard that the force of her body hitting the ground forced her bones together so hard they splintered and shattered. Isn't that fucking freaky? <laughs> so it just smushed her bone and crushed it like a... Yeah, yeah, yep, that's what happened to my mom's arm. And then she was like, I'm fine. Just get me some peas. That, that's her, that was how she... I, I can't help but wonder if she was in shock. She wasn't, like, treated for shock, but... Yeah, like a soda can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what was really gross, though, was the surgery she had to have to fix it. She doesn't have a plate in her arm. That's the crazy thing, right? They had to... So basically, they... they it wasn't, like, super crazy splintered. It was, um... I, I mean, I don't know if it did or not. I didn't hear a crunch, but we were, like, outside of the round pen. You know what I mean? So we were, like, 30 feet away from her, maybe. So, like, what they had to do, they didn't put a plate in her arm. It was the... Was it both bones? No, I don't think so. I think it was just one of the bones. So I think one bone was fine. I don't remember. It's been so long. I was a kid when it happened. So... I don't really remember all the details. Um, I think she just broke her radius. I think. Um, I think the old night was okay. I don't know how, but she only broke one of the bones in her arm. Um, and it wasn't like super splintered. So it wasn't like they had to like try to piece it back together. There was like a couple. I'm talking about bones falling apart and I'm losing my signal. I'm surprised I haven't dropped more frames. It's really windy outside. Um. So they're basically able to piece it together and they had, there was no plate, um, I don't think, but they had to stick a pin in one side that came out of the skin and they had to stick a pin in the other side that came out of the skin and then there was a bar between them, right? So it was outside the skin. There was a bar outside of her skin, like at, like two inches off her skin. So there were pins in her, like inner skin, and then the pins were connected to a bar that was outside. And then every six days or something like that, they had to tighten the bar, and it would pull the bones apart so that they could go back into place. I think, if I'm rem remembering correctly. It, it was, it was so gross. <laughs> it was so gross. Oh, it makes my arm hurt just thinking about it. Yeah, so she had that bar for such a long time. For such a long time. 
And then, like, because you would have to, like, clean around where the pins were inside the skin because obviously, like, you're going to have, like, pus and stuff and you have to make sure it doesn't get um, infected because it's going directly into your body. And, yeah, it was just, it was just so gross. Yeah, because she didn't get a cast or anything. She got, like, a full-ass bar, like, outside of her hand. And, yeah, they'd have to, like, crank it and then, and then she had to do physical therapy and stuff. <laughs> it's just so gross. Yeah, so they had to like crank it apart, and then and then that's that's what she did for like I don't even know how long. It felt like forever because it was her right hand too, and she's right handed, so she couldn't even like like eventually she kind of got used to it to the point where like she could write again. But bleach, you missed all the her horse girl stories. But I will bang swish. Yeah. It was gross. <laughs> it was horrific. Horrific. I don't know if it pins. Yeah, it felt a lot longer than that. I don't know if it actually was or not, but it, it really felt a lot longer than that. <laughs> but it was like, I don't know. It was just, it was, oh, it was rough. Yeah, I just remember her not wanting to go to the hospital. Well, because it's, like, it's just so expensive. And that was before insurance kind of was quote-unquote better. Are we, I have audio off. Are we talking about... Uh, someone tell them it's horse girl stories. Physical therapy. History. Here's Richard Simmons' tape. I snapped bones in half and tore my tendon off bone. Need a cast for the rest of my senior year. No. Like, this is how much my parents didn't want to do hospital visits, right? When I was a kid, and I mean like kid, I mean like five maybe, and I remember this. I pinned myself to the floor. And by pinned myself to the floor, I mean I was playing a game on the floor. And then I went to stand up. And I was stuck to the floor. I could not lift my foot up from the floor. So I pulled my sock off. And there was a sewing pin all the way through my pinky toe from one end out the other, directly through my pinky toe. It was weird. And it was one of those things that didn't hurt until you saw it. Yeah, it was, it was, it went from like the pin went through the carpet into my toe, back into the carpet. And I remember this vividly because we were supposed to go somewhere because one of my dad's friends was over. And like, and like, mind you, this is like, I'm like five, right? I'm not really grasping the severity of the situation. And no, 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 it went through. I have no idea how. So it went through, like, if you look at your foot, it went through the side of like the outside side of my pinky toe. And it went all the way through. And came out like the inside side of my pinky toe. So it didn't go all the way down. It went sideways. And you'd think. Well V it must have just went through like the skin or something. Because how else would you not. Yeah so sideways. How else would you not notice it. Well let me tell you. I remember we were supposed to go somewhere. Because my dad's friend was over. And I remember my mom had me in like a bear hug because you know obviously like a five-year-old's gonna start kicking and screaming right my dad had his pliers from the garage and between him and his friend it took them 25 minutes to get the pin out of my toe it was it it was not like like it didn't just slip out like it was just in the skin Oh, oh no um so like they finally get it out and they wrap it up and like I'm like shaking at that point because I just had a sewing pin get pulled out of my toe which I'm assuming must have gone through the bone because if it was just through them like like skin and stuff and muscle like you think it would have come right out right I don't know I mean that's just my thought process I'm not I'm no doctor but if it's in, it have to, it had, it was wedged in there <laughs> in something. And 
And I remember my mom going, well, you had your tetanus shot last year. So the, if we go to the doctors, they're just going to ask you if you've had a tetanus shot and then charge us $600 and then send you home. So a sewing needle, like, couldn't put your own bones too thick and tough. I mean, that's what I thought, but I have no idea why it was so stuck. Like, they, and, like, I, like, my dad's not a small guy. He's, like, big blue-collar Wisconsin farm guy, right? And, like, he was, he was yanking on it. Like, it was hard. So, yeah, so then they just, they just, so then we went wherever we were going. We just, like, they put a band-aid on it and we went wherever we were going. <laughs> yes, okay, okay. I'm, like, I was thinking about it now. Like, damn, I would have at least wanted, like, an x-ray to make sure nothing, like, you know, like, it didn't rip up some cartilage or something. I'm like, shit. I know it's small, but still. <laughs> so, yeah, I had a sewing needle, sewing pin, all the way through my toe once. Um, I've, like, sprained both my wrists. This, this is why I think it's why it's so easy for me to have carpal tunnel. I you still have. I've, uh, if you had a tetanus shot, that's probably all you need. I mean, yeah, I just, I think me personally, like, if it was my kid, I probably would have at least gone to the hospital to get it checked out, but I, I've sprained both my wrists and both my ankles multiple times. I haven't been to the hospital once for it. Um, <laughs> I dislocated my shoulder once, and the only reason, my mom said this to me, the only reason why I took you to the ER was because I thought you broke your neck. But, like, when they took an x-ray, they saw that, like, my, my shoulder was, like, the joint was out of the socket. And then she told me the only reason why I brought you to the ER was because I thought you broke your neck. <laughs> so, like, I don't go to the doctor for stuff. We don't go to the doctor for stuff. Yeah, when I dislocated my shoulder, that hurt so fucking bad, dude. Oh, my God, that was the worst. It hurt so bad. Because, like, like, your arm kind of goes numb, too. So, it's like, it's pain, but then, like, your arm feels fucking weird, too. It's it's terrible. It's so uncomfortable. And then they have to, like, put it back. <laughs> Which is also terrible. It's just the worst. Yeah, she's like, because I fell out of a swimming pool, which sounds really stupid. Um, I fell out of, because, so we had, like, an above-ground swimming pool, but we didn't have, <laughs> that's so stupid. <laughs> you thing as a kid where your tendons and your shoulders are too elastic and you dislocated them all the time? I'm sure I have hypermobility on some level because, I, like I said, I've dislocated both, not dislocated, I've dislocated my shoulder, I've sprained both my wrists, like, severely several times, and I've sprained both my ankles severely several times. Um, so, but my uncle, my uncle has, um, like, the elastic tendons in his shoulders. He, his shoulders, like... <laughs> My uncle was racing once. He used to race uh, modifieds. And he was racing and he won the feature. And he was doing his victory lap. And he, he like stuck his hand out to give someone a high five coming into to victory lane. And, and they gave him a high five and it dislocated his shoulder. And they had to cut him out of the race car because he couldn't get out on his own. They had to cut the roof off his race car. Because he someone touched his hand and his shoulder fell off. Modified? Yeah. Um, Like it was a modified stock car? Like a dirt race? I don't know what else to call them. They're, I don't know. They've always just been modified. Not like a sprint car. Like a souped up stock car? Like if you look at a stock car, but then make it pointier? No, not a rally car. A modified. I don't know. Here, let me find a picture. They look like this. This is not my uncle's car, by the way, so don't don't go all weird on me, guys. Not it's just a random car I got off the internet. But yeah, they look like this. Eh, eh, yeah. They go in dirt. 
Yeah, so he stuck his arm out the the window to give someone a high five and they had to cut the his that one looks a little bit more modified than my uncle's. I don't remember. I'm pretty sure it had two like full A pillars on his. Cause he was just bitching about how stupid it was. That now he had to fix he had to redo the whole roll cage and everything. <laughs> Lego breaking noise. If it's modified, it's not a stock car. Well, I know. I'm just trying to explain what it was to people who didn't know. Yeah. So, but yeah. So I've, I've, um, yeah. I have dislocated my wrist, like, to the point where, like, my mom just kept wrist braces in the house. Like, the expensive ones. <laughs> Because I was spraining my wrist all the time. Oh, my God. Once I was, like, playing, like, I was at, like, a family thing, right? And I was, like, playing um kickball. And uh, this bigger kid fell on me. And my wrist, like, if you hold your wrist out in front of you, he, it, like, <laughs> um, um, um. So, like, if you hold your wrist out in front of you and then fold your fingers, like, inward and then fold your whole wrist inward. I can't do it with my wrist anymore. I can't do it anymore with my right wrist. Um, so then it kind of looks like a, like a, and then fold it again, right? So it kind of curves back and your fingers are pointing straight back at you. Okay, now, now put, put the top of your fingers, like, point that into your chest, like, flat against your chest, right? And then throw yourself on top of it. That is what happened to me. But instead of just me being thrown on top of it, it was like a whole ass like 16 year old boy on top of me as well right which naturally i don't know how it didn't break my wrist but i'm screaming bloody murder because it hurts and i'm like my wrist my wrist my wrist my wrist my wrist my wrist because it's i'm like i think it's broken at this point right because the, he's still laying on me and i'm screaming and my mom Thinks I'm screaming my ribs. My ribs, my ribs, my ribs. So she rolls him off my ribs, which then puts more weight onto my wrist because it was like by my collarbone. Probably between my boobs, my boobage. So she rolls him like more like towards my shoulders, which then gets the pressure off my ribs, but puts all of his weight on my wrist. So I start screaming even louder and I start like kicking and like punching. <laughs> And, and they finally get me off, and I'm just screaming because it hurt so bad. Did we go to the hospital? No, we did not go to the hospital. <laughs> we did not. I was literally to the point where I was, like, screaming and swinging and, like, punching to get this taken care of and, like, get this to stop. And, like, no, we did not go to the hospital. I got put in my little wrist brace. <laughs> That's what I got. So when people are like, oh, yeah. It's probably why I have carpal tunnel. <laughs> Shit's probably all sorts of fucked up. When I got my cast broke, when I got my cast, I broke my wrist. I had my first cast with names and all that jazz. I asked if I could keep it. She cut it in half and was. I was like, oh, okay. Second cast around. Slowly went down enough where I could slide it off. When she went to get the tool, I slid it off and handed it to my mother. Amazing. Given Admiral told to walk it off. Pretty much. My, my mom was very much a proponent of like ice and then hot, and then ice, and then hot. <laughs> so, like, I'm, I was, like, I don't know. I don't know what my wrist looked like if anyone ever <laughs> took an x-ray. <laughs> I would be scared. That was the worst, though. I just remember how much that hurt. Like, I was literally, like, full-on, like, screaming. I remember that. Just, like, actually, like, not just, like, yelling loudly. Like, it was straight up screaming because it hurt so bad. Rest, ice, compression, elevation. Yeah! Fixes it 100% of the time, 6% of the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's called farm medicine. <laughs> trying to think of what else. My dad has had... My dad has been run over by a tractor. <laughs> when I say this stuff, together this sounds absolutely insane all father has been run over by a tractor 
I have a pin and a screw and carpal tunnel release all done at one time. Right hand dominant. Snap playing high school football. Oh, that sounds terrible. I couldn't even do sports. I was too afraid. I did soccer for a while, but then I sprained my ankle so bad I couldn't walk. He, uh, so he was, um, oh no, Broden. Um, he was in the cow pasture, I remember. And I don't, I don't know exactly what happened, but the tractor started rolling on its own. Like someone left it in neutral. I don't know if it was him. He said it wasn't him. I wasn't around for this. Um, someone left it in neutral, I believe. And it basically, like, my dad wasn't paying attention because he was dealing with the cows. And then it literally, like, the big tire, if if you guys have seen, like, big farm tractors, like, the big tire. It was him. It probably was him. Um, it The big tire literally ran over from, like his, like, his armpit across, like, just past his head. So, like, it touched his ear, he said. And it, it broke his collarbone. It, like, ran over his collarbone. Um, but because he was in the cow pen, <laughs> there was so much shit on the ground that he squished into it. <laughs> and that is the only reason why only <laughs> his collarbone was broken. <laughs> Literally saved by the cow shit. <laughs> yep. Yeah, he broke his collarbone. Because he got ran over by a tractor. <laughs> I think that's the worst. My dad also has accidentally hit himself with a chainsaw and then, like, kept going. Like, he accidentally hit his leg once with a chainsaw. Where's Goose when you need him? He was, like, cutting a log and then, like, I think he hit a knot or something and it kind of, like, kicked. And it ended up, like, going through the log really fast and, it, like, cut him across, like, the knee. And uh, I'm like, oh my god, you're bleeding. He's like, let me finish the log first and then we'll go down. <laughs> He's like, hold on, I'm almost done. <laughs> yep, tore through the pants, there's blood everywhere. <laughs> Gotta finish the job. Priorities, right? Oh, man. There's some crazy injuries in my family. I'm sure there's more. I'm trying to think. Done that with an angle grinder and nearly split my thigh, but only nicked me. Remember all arteries. Remember all arteries. Gotta cut this lock. <laughs> There's so much blood through. I'm like, oh, oh. Yeah, the water got fish lock. <laughs> my dad has also been in a, like a, um, so my dad used to race cars too, dirt cars, and he raced um stock cars. And and a stock car is not like a car just straight off the road. Like a dirt stock car is, is different than like Here, I'll just get a picture for those who don't know. Again, not my dad's car. But this is a this is a stock car. It is tiny. Oh my god. That that's a dirt stock car, not a modified. As you can tell, it looks much more like a normal car. My arteries are suck so much. They're under so much tension and get stuck in hard to reach places. I get severed. What did I think about the White Claw? It was okay. I'm like, I'll probably, like, if someone offers me one, I'll probably drink it again. But, like, was it my, like, mo like, I'd rather have, like, a Jack and Coke than, a, like, a White Claw. But if someone, like, hands one to me, I'll, I'll drink it. So it's, like, it's alright. I'm not, I don't like, um, sparkling water. I don't like seltzer. So I, I never had one because I didn't think I was going to like it. So I, I, you know, it was out of necessity at that point. Um, but my dad flipped his stock car nose over tail once. <laughs> and, and then he gets out and he's laughing. And my mom had like a death grip on my neck. <laughs> cause like, 
Because, you know, you get tense or in the stands watching and she's got like me in like a chokehold and she's stressing out and she's just tensing up and like I'm losing blood to my brain, right? And then he gets out and like he's laughing, right? And then she's just like, I think she wanted, I think she considered punching me because she wanted to punch him, but I was like closer, but then like didn't. And there was like this weird little hand twitch. I <laughs> trauma stream. No, <laughs> for real though. Doesn't like sparkling water. Nothing is having the wrong opinion. Sparkling water is gross, dude. If they make some specific numbers to them, they count as a stock car, even if the general public would never be able to buy one. Yeah, I mean, you couldn't take a stock car on the road, obviously. I don't know. They've always been called stock cars. Street stock. Because basically, like, with a stock car... So, like, when you take a stock car, like a dirt stock, you normally take, like, a normal car and then you break it down and then add a roll cage, add the panels, add the fence. You know, like, you add, like, race car stuff to it. But, like, a modified is built from the ground up as a race car, if that makes sense. Sparkling wire, gross. Played my arm cutting copper in an outdoor AC unit. It was a hot day and I didn't know until my coach was like, oh, bud, your arm bright red dripping. Oh, no. Yeah, so he flipped his car, and my mom almost choked me out and then punched me in the face. <laughs> she was so stressed. But, but, you know, credit to the five-point harness and the roll cage. You know, we gotta give credit where credit is due. Because he, he was fine. I think, if I remember correctly, he was, like, a little sore the next day, but, like, no broken bones, no whiplash, no nothing. He was just, like, a little sore the next day on, like, the shoulders. But yeah, like literally like nose over tail. I think he flipped twice and then hit the ground and he landed upside down. <laughs> I don't even remember what happened. If anyone's ever seen Cars though, it was kind of like uh, the blue one <laughs> at the end. He doesn't go, he didn't go flying like that though. I think he quit after that. I think he finished the season. I think he stopped racing. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> I've never seen cars. Yeah. Race cars and horses. That was my, uh, that was my child. <laughs> well, spoilers. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Commissar. I'm sorry. I have a, I have a decade window on spoilers, so... If it's been out for a decade, I can't, uh... You know, we can't really call spoilers anymore. Got my general rule of thumb. That was the most Midwest thing I've ever heard, V. I mean, that we had alcohol at kids' birthday parties. But yeah, hell yeah, another whiskey. I like whiskey. Bourbon's better, but I will take whiskey. I'm happy with whiskey. Actually, it's because I'm so broke. I'll drink um 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 Kessler's, which is honestly terrible, but I'll drink it anyway. Kessler's Kessler's is like kerosene. Dude. Is alcohol at kids' parties normal? I mean, like yes and no. Like, can I get a hoya? Happy six months. Oh, uh, Shago, thank you for six months of support. Thank you for the resub. So, like. I grew up with that. Like, there was always Bud Light at kids' parties, right? Um, but, like... Um... Uh, sorry. Uh, but, like, there's other people that didn't have alcohol at kids' parties, so I don't know what the normal would be. My, I know what my normal is. <laughs> I remember the first time I ever got drunk was at my best friend's graduation party. <laughs> so, you know. Yes, the blue cooler with the soda. Yes. Well, or like the 4th of July party that always had the jello shots. Uh-oh. I hit a button. Give me a moment. Behold, my insides. Gross, bleach. From the adult cooler. 
I was never, yeah, no, I wasn't ballsy enough to do that because, well, see, okay, I don't like beer, right? And my, my norm, we did the jello, we did steal the jello shots. Uh, my mom would normally drink like Bud Light, which is disgusting, right? So it was very easy to not drink at my parents' parties because it was almost always Bud Light and it's gross. I accidentally drank my mom's tequila as a kid because it was clear and it was clear cup and just downed it, puked immediately. Oh no. <laughs> oh no, that's terrible. <laughs> but yeah, no, like at my at my best friend's graduation party, her parents were like the parents at the party I was at on Saturday where they had a very, 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 very nice house and they had like crazy shit there and they're like, here kids, here's the bottle of cherry schnapps, have fun! And like we're all like 17 and 18 <laughs> in their garage with the garage door open to the street and we're just taking shots of cherry schnapps and playing a drinking game. And it was like truly a drink for kids. I could, oh my God, cough medicine made me so sick for the longest time. <laughs> oh, it was rough. I had to get like, I had to get like unflavored cough medicine for the longest time because I drank way too much. I remember we were all done by like nine. Like the party started at six. We started drinking at like 730 and we were all out by nine. Like, all out by nine. Because we were just... Because there was, like, six of us. We all ended up sleeping over. I don't know what... I don't know what our mom did to convince... Like, I knew I was sleeping over. But, like, they're, like, dudes with us. Which, like, most parents were old school. And you didn't have, like, girls and dudes of high school age sleeping in the same room together. Right? My flight is delayed out of Atlanta. You, you better get out of there before Wednesday, my dude. See, that's just smart by the parents. They knew you'd just get sleepy and pass out. And that's exactly what happened, dude. We got sleepy and passed out. We all passed out in the basement. There was like six of us down there. Why does someone give you hot chocolate made with mother's milk? What's mother's milk? I've never heard of that. What kind of alcohol is that? Breast. Sorry. Why would you... Okay, nope. Please share with the class why you thought that that was topical to the conversation. <laughs> Please, I want I want to know your thought process here. I need to know. We were talking about cherry schnapps and alcohol. You bring in breast milk. What's the segue in your mind? Because I have this bad habit of having a segue but not saying it out loud. So I have a feeling that's what happened here. Elaborate. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. We're all here to learn. We're all here to learn something. Small delay. Only like 20 minutes. Oh my gosh. Well, at least you're not stuck there until a hurricane shows up because that would be bad. I hate flying. I was, something horrible always happens when I fly. You want to hear more trauma, dumb, but you should hear me flying, dude. Hate it. Going back to Florida just in time for Milton to bitch slap us. No, stay in Georgia. <laughs> stay in Georgia. It's not safe. Stay where you are. Don't go, don't go back to Florida. Whatever you do, it's not safe. You know, every VTuber gets really close. Maybe we'll just be really close today, guys. Should we be close? I just be close to you guys. Hello. For long distance travel, I recommend trade. I buy twenty four pack of beer. There you go. But you mean to tell me I have to go to a kids party and hear them little shit screaming sober? Absolutely not. Super duper close. This is I can get closer if you guys need me to. Hold on a second. Hold on, I gotta do some stupid stuff though. There you go. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi. No. I'm good right here. We never do a close stream. I never zoom in. You guys don't ever get to see my freckles. 
I keep a handle of Tito's in my car for those occasions. <laughs> I'm working towards being an airline pilot, so I won't be riding many trains except the ones for the flight crew orgies. Wow, there's just so many things I'm learning. Here. Can you tell me why I have such a terrible time flying? Oh, Goose, hello. I was talking about how, uh, fuck you, Gamma. What's up for chances? Oh, I was just telling, uh, I was just trauma dumping on chat. And I was talking about how, um, my dad once chainsawed himself in the leg and just, like, was bleeding. Like, he went through his jeans and it was just bleeding profusely. And I was like, we should probably get you someplace. And then, and then he was like, I gotta finish this log first. <laughs> Did someone wake you up? My irises aren't transparent. That was back in the day. I fixed that. You know, I I severe I specifically remember my dad saying something along the lines of chaps is for pussies. Apparently, lots of flight crews have orgies and are lots of attractive flight attendants hook up with the pilots. That is crazy. I mean, I guess it kind of makes sense, but that's crazy. No, Caboose, why did you wake him up? The poor guy was sleeping. I've seen some people almost take off their nuts. If they didn't have chaps, they would not have balls right now. Oh my god, that's so terrible. <laughs> I mean, not wearing chaps with a chainsaw is a great way to give yourself fun. No. No, I feel like, yeah, I don't know. Because I was like, oh, well, you know, you really don't need any chaps if you're handling a chainsaw a lot. But, like, my dad was always handling a chainsaw. Because we lived on a farm and any time a tree needed to come down, like, it was my dad was the one with the chainsaw. Like, he, he, at least once a weekend was chainsaw time. You know what I mean? Pilots are successful, aggressive men. Yeah? Are they aggressive? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe he should have had chaps. Maybe I should have gotten him chaps for Christmas. You need chaps for fuck's sake. Good lord. I've chewed my hands up for just sharpening them. Yeah, my dad. No, no. It's jeans for that man. Jeans. He's never had chaps. He was just cutting. He's like in his 60s. And he was just cutting trees down last weekend. Chapless. PPE is there for a reason. I, yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, the man got ran over by a tractor, so I can see why he thinks he can handle a chainsaw without, like, any kind of safety measures. As the chaps always send me their chaps, they got no groin by definition of being chaps. Oh, my God. I'm surprised he hasn't looked that up on YouTube yet. Like, it's, like, YouTube's his pastime. It's, it's like, rebuilding tractors, and then YouTube is, like, his pastime. That's what he does. Like, it's, it's, it's nothing but YouTube. Chapless chaps? Isn't that just pants? Shorts? Lingerie? Like, even with chaps, the chainsaw will leave a bruise. Oh, God, that would hurt so bad. Oh, my God. Well, that was the thing, right? It hit his leg. Like, he's bleeding. And he's just like, I'm, uh, I'm gonna... We didn't go to the hospital after that, either. Like, my mom put a, I, I, I feel like she threw, like, um, what's that stuff they put on the horses when the horses, we had, like, stuff that you put on the horses when the horses got cut. She's, like, she, like, slapped that on the, on the chainsaw bit and then, like, wrapped it up in vet, no, it wasn't iodine, it was, like, some thick paste. I can't remember what it is. But, uh, he, he, he slapped that, like, she slapped that on it and then, like, wrapped it up with vet wrap. That fucking self. Yeah, see, Argus knows what I'm talking about. It's the fucking self. Ivermectin? No, that's for wormers. <laughs> Close, though. Oh, my God. My mom's neighbor started taking Ivermectin when the freaking... The freaking COVID started. They started taking Ivermectin, and then one of them ended up, like, having liver issues afterwards. And they're like, it's the government lying to us. <laughs> I, you should not be taking ivermectin. <laughs> Do not take horse ivermectin. It's not made for people. 
All right. Yeah, thank you, Goose, for showing up. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to have you woken up. I hope you have good sleep. Ivermectin cured you? Cured you of what? If Bleach was here, he'd say something racist. It's been prescribed by government for ignorance from Africa for decades. Well, yeah, like when it's prescribed by a doctor, but if you go to Fleet Farm and just buy a tube of Ivermectin, it's a little different. It's a little bit different. It's not quite the same. You say it? I, I'm i going to get clipped if I say it. We used, we do use ivermectin, but it's for cancer patients, not for COVID. So I just said it's five grams fucking with them. Back to watching hot women ASMR and crying. Heck yeah, what the hell? <laughs> Poison self with horse dewormer. It's true. Gonna go goose again in 27 minutes. Be nice to goose. Yeah, so one of them ended up with, like, liver issues because, like, they got, they just took too much ivermectin. I don't know who's crying. I think Goose is crying. <laughs> I don't know. It's disturbing in two different ways. If, like, if Goose is crying, you know, that's, like, kind of sad. But then if he's, like, watching hot girls cry ASMR, I don't know how I feel about that either. <laughs> you know what I mean? Women we'll crying ASMR. <laughs> Just drink straight ethanol. That's easier. That was happening, though. I think in Pakistan and Iran, they were drinking ethanol because they thought it would cure them of COVID. Like, the shit was crazy. For clarification, I'm crying. <laughs> Go to sleep, Goose. Too much of any drug is bad, but yes, please take what's prescribed. Yeah, well, it's not good for you, though. Did ethanol work? No, they died. Honestly, I should have just eaten bleach wipes to cure myself faster. <laughs> well, you know, you just put bleach directly to your face. Oh, man, this stuff was crazy. Yeah, drink the methanol. That's true, you cannot be sick with Kung Flu if you're dead. Though it is true that Mectin is an effective treatment for malaria symptoms, many of which are shared with the Rona. The lab dance is better. No! No, don't! Commissar, don't! You'll summon Fubi! Don't! That's like our favorite song! Do not! Do not- <laughs> <the> wrong tab! <laughs> Quick, someone clip it! Someone take a screenshot and put it in the, to the four Cotton 4K! <laughs> Oh my god, that's Fubi's favorite song. Drives me nuts. I hate that song. I've heard it. It's not even that it's a bad song. I've just heard it so many times. So it's just over and over and over again. Fly up, dang, it's always better when the stripper is crying. <laughs> I, I know, I know all the words and I hate that. <laughs> Gives me such a thrill. <laughs> Against her will. I hate it. I lost rights to post in the 4K channel. Did you do something wrong? Probably. Probably did something wrong. Man. See, that's so lewd. So lewd. That poor raccoon doesn't know what's coming for it. Poor raccoon. I didn't know that channel existed, TBH. Wow, damn, you got banned from a channel you didn't even know was there. That's crazy. I don't know that one, so I wouldn't be able to sing it anyway. I only know, I only know the stripper one because, like, Fubi played it nonstop for, like, years. Every time I was in her car. That song was on. It got to the point where I bought my own car just so I wouldn't have to drive around in her car. Just so I didn't have to hear that song. It was that bad. Google it. I'm not playing it. I don't e I don't even know if there's a music video. I hope not. I hope not. Good luck. Good luck, Bacon. 
Good luck. Poopy was using that song to establish a trick word. My buddy was always, I'm a sleeper agent. Oh no. I don't think anyone believes that. Noted Fubia is the kind of person who only plays a single song constantly. No, see, so she's not. That's That was the ridiculous part. It was just that one song because I hated it. It was a troll. Wait, didn't he say he was drinking? Are you drinking and flying, sir? <laughs> sir? No. Okay, okay, okay. Good, good, good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She just did it solely to torture me. I'm a pastor. Oh, okay, that's fine. You can have as many drinks as you want then. Drink all the airline drinks. I wish I could drink on a plane. What, what was the song? A lap dance is always better when the server's crying. Just in case both pilots are sick and can't fly. Ha ha. Ha ha. Yeah. yeah. Why can't I? Because I can't afford to drink on a plane. <laughs> I can have the free soda sometimes. I can't afford the I can't afford the the drinks. Guys, I'm broke a bitch. I'm a broke bitch. What can I tell you? <laughs> I'm a broke ass bitch. <laughs> I get that I get that half a coke sometimes. I got a free beer for donating to charity and the guy behind me bought me another. Amazing. Ma'am, are you flying Spirit? No, it's Southwest, my dude. So, like, I, I tried to fly Southwest. Um, I had a horrible experience with Delta. And then, um, American Airlines, I've been on a couple times. Which I also had a horrible experience. <laughs> $20 boulder chips, let's go. The full bags are four, it's true. Say my fucking, I also fucking hate Delta. Fuck Delta. <laughs> They don't give me the can. Maybe it's because I... I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm small and they think I... They can just get away with it. Maybe they're like, I'm gonna bully this little... Little bitch. <laughs> I'm a bullier. You have to circumcise the world when you fly southwest because that's the only direction you can go? No, they sometimes go northeast. You can ask to keep the can. God damn it, I'm never gonna get the can. Still better than Delta, though. Ha! Huh? Well, can you be... Can you make Delta not shit, then, please? Circumnavigate. Now we're gonna circumcise the world. I'll never fly Delta again, man. The plane broke down, and they, they were gonna, like, take off. We were gonna take off, like we were ta we were like pulling out of the gate, and then they're, like something happened. They're like, "I'm sorry, we gotta go back in. Something broke," and then, and then we had to sit there for forty five minutes, and then they're like deciding if we we're gonna deplane or not, and then they're like, "No, no, no, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine." So we left, and I was like, "Okay, they didn't really say things were fixed, but I'm gonna assume they're fixed since we're flying, right?" And uh, oh, I've never flown Frontier, but then we get. And then we, so we get to our destination like an hour and a half late. I don't know how that all works. I don't know what all happened. There's like, not only did it like take us, like we left 45 minutes late. The, the, the winds were not in our favor. And then there was something else going on at the gate we were supposed to go to. And then they gave me like a little voucher because I had to stay at the hotel then because I missed my connecting flight. It was like the last flight out for the night. So they made me like sit in this sketchy ass hotel. Obviously the hotel was in Delta. That was like the airport. But like I, I'm still really upset about it. Oh, I have flown United. United is worse than Delta. I will give you that. United is pretty bad too. United is very uncomfortable. <laughs> United is bad. I will give you that. Delta is a little bit better than United. Delta let us board, and then they went, Sorry, we delayed you for two hours, and now the pilots have been awake too long. Go Get off and find a hotel. We hate you. The worst plane I ever flew was Tiger Air in Australia. That shit made my spirit look nice by comparison. That sounds horrific. Not to be mean, but I'm never flying any company. Ugh. Snooze. 
any company that has Africa in the title because they always cancel flights. Oh, yeah? But I've had worse experience with Delta. Yeah, no, Delta. Uh, United is really... I've only flown on tiny United planes, though. I've never been on, like, a big one. I've only been on tiny United planes. I had to stay the night in the country of Colombia because Delta blows too hard. Oh, that does not sound fun. That does not sound fun at all. <laughs> I was in Phoenix. Which might as well be Colombia, let's be honest. <laughs> I had a minor breakdown in the hotel room. <laughs> it was fine. I didn't even eat breakfast the next morning. They were like, oh, you get a complimentary breakfast. And like I found out that the first like hotel shuttle went back to the went back to the airport at six AM. So I was up at like five and I just got on the hotel shuttle back to the airport right away. Cause for some reason I felt safer in the airport than I did at the hotel. I just take a prop plane when I went to the Dom. I never realized how loud they are even inside. I've been on so many prop planes, it's stupid. It's stupid. I always end up on prop planes, dude. I don't know why. I mean, I know why. I always end up at tiny airports, but still. <laughs> They're so scary. Especially landing. Landing on a prop plane is so much scarier than a jet. Holy shit. Uh, it's like it's way rougher. <laughs> Columbia Airport people basically told us to fuck off when we checked back into nice. Stop flying shit distances if you don't want Cessnas. And it was a prop one, Lamau. I like got on the I think it was United. I think I think it was a United prop plane. And I sat down. There were nine seats. It was so tiny. No, seven! There were seven seats. So I was all the way in the back and there were like three seats across and then like this guy sat down next to me and he's like, he's like, oh yeah, I'm just coming back from Afghanistan. He was like a, a, a contractor and he's like telling me all this shit that happened in Afghanistan and I'm like, I didn't ask him, a, I didn't ask him one question, not one question. He just talked the entire time. Like I know all about his family. I know all about these operations that happened in Afghanistan. I know about his kids. I know about his wife. I'm like, I, I, like what? Like there was no opsec in this man. He's just straight up trauma dumping. And I'm like, <laughs> that was my first time on a tiny plane. And this guy's telling me all this shit that happened in goddamn Afghanistan. <laughs> I was like, oh my god. They didn't even give me drinks on that flight because I was too short. I was like, I just want to land. I want to crawl into a hole. <laughs> nah. I was like, bro. Bruh. Be caught even a circle of trauma jumping. It never ends. I know way more about operations in Afghanistan than I ever should have found out. I used to work on jet engines that would scare people telling them how easy a plane can crash. Oh, I mean one bird. One goose is all it takes. We know that. My dad likes to tell the story. I don't know why, but he likes to tell these stories. I think my parents might be a little fucked up in the head now that I think about it. But his uh his co his old co-worker from when he worked in the factory was a Marine. And during Gulf War? No, not Vietnam. Gulf War. Gulf War sounds right. I don't know. Something like that. And uh he likes telling I don't know why he likes it's not even his story. So his friend's telling him the story, his coworker, and he used to work on, on the jets, right? And his, so his coworker was a Marine working on jets. When he was working on a jet, another one of his coworkers, a Marine, was in the seat, in the cockpit, working on something in the cockpit of the jet, right? And they're in the hangar. I'm sure some of you can figure out what's about to happen, Right. The man accidentally hits the eject button <laughs> in the hangar. And my dad loves telling this story. And I'm like, bro. <laughs> like, so see, this, this is kids' parties in Wisconsin, right? You, the parents drink a bunch of Bud Light, and then my dad tells the story to kids. 
<laughs> and I'm like, why? <laughs> Dad, come on. Like, but like, I won't go into gruesome detail that he likes to, but yeah, he will, he will go into like gruesome detail that apparently his coworker went into about everything that happened in this hangar with the seat that ejected in the hangar. I'm just like, jeez. Regular Wisconsin for drinking, eating ground beef, and then trauma dumping your kids. The ground beef! Yeah, raw ground beef. So, my mom's always like, it's sirloin. It's fancy beef. It's fine. It's the ground sirloin. Been in hangers before when they used to let kids on base. Yeah, I've been in a couple hangers. I've been in hangars with private jets, and then they're like, don't touch the jet. Because <laughs> we were looking at it. We were looking at it, and they're like, don't touch the jet. We just cleaned it. And I was like, oh, shit. So sorry. It was security. It had security on it. Isn't that crazy? I've been that close to a private jet. I know Arcus has one in his backyard, and I know that's not crazy for him. But for, like, normal people, that's pretty crazy. They're calling you dirty. See, he knows. I would eat... I would not eat frozen hot dogs. I would eat potatoes. I would eat raw potatoes, though. An air vehicle is all I'm missing. I would eat raw potatoes. I eat frozen something that was weird. What was it? Like, I can taste it, but I can't figure... I can't remember what it was. Taste in my mouth. I don't know what it is, though. Raw taters are poisonous. Well, I didn't die. I get that from my dad. He also ate raw potatoes. <laughs> my dad's very old school in the way that, like, he never learned cooking or cleaning from his mother because his dad was, like, very much like the, you know, my, like, my grandma wore, 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 wore pearls and heels to clean very, like, leave it to beaver kind of stuff. So, like, my dad never... Learned how to cook or clean. So, like, when he... Apparently, when he moved out of his parents' house, he didn't know how to cook and clean. So, he subsisted on raw potatoes for a significant portion of his life. Leave it to Beaver? Yeah, Beaver! Have you ever seen Leave it to Beaver, Beaver? I think they just make your stomach upset, honestly. I don't think they'll kill you. I think they just make you shit yourself. Oh, trust me, I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, Ward Ward Cleaver, was that the dad's name? My dad used to watch Leave It to Beaver and the Andy Griffith, Griffith show a lot. That was on the TV a lot. I watched, like, a lot of black and white TV, now that I think about it. Beaver of the Cleaver family? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Andy Griffith! Arcus is just me if I had grown up with money. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna ride that joke into the ground tonight, sir. I just hope you know that. And now the whistles are do 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 I'm like, oh, yeah, I was, like, poor growing up and stuff. And then, because, like, B, take that joke even further. Your dad raced cars. My dad raced sailboats. Oh, I fucking hate you. <laughs> well, that's the crazy thing, right? Is like, I grew up, like, um, I've, like, I found out some crazy shit. Like, my parents were struggling for cash at, at points, right? Like, there's just things that, you know, you find out as an adult, right? But, like, I'm like, we had horses and race cars. And I'm like, why did we have these things if we're struggling to pay bills? I don't understand. What is going on? You know what I mean? Like, it was just, it was weird. Because, like, when I was a teenager, I would, like, I bought groceries and stuff. Like, because I worked. So, when I, I, I had a, I got my first job at 15 and I worked like, I worked my entire high school, um, I don't know, career, right? And then after I graduated, I had two jobs. 
And like I I would like help with groceries and stuff. So like I don't know. It's just it was weird. It was really weird. It was a really weird cognitive dissidence. Right? And then we had like horses and stuff. I'm like, wait, if we can't afford these things, why do we you know, because you don't really know how expensive that kind of stuff is until you're older and realize how expensive the world is. Two jobs uphill both ways. Yeah. I worked in a foam factory, a styrofoam factory, and I worked at a library. Very hardcore. Very hardcore jobs. Very belligerent. Yep. Very tough work. Very difficult, strenuous work. Dang, a long Valkyrie life. It's true. That's really common to be honest, particularly owning horses, but mainly baking the bills. Yeah, it's weird. Library jobs must be nice. I was a page, so basically I put books away. Like when you like return a library book, like they have like the bitch kids, like put them away. <laughs> God damn it, bacon. Um, so that was my job, but it was like, it was nice because it was only like three hours like every other day. So like, it could have been a night, I know. So like I would I would um I'd work I'd work my my uh ten hours at the foam job and then go straight to the library. No commissar. Um and then I would just like chill at the library for three hours and then I'd go home and uh or you know, go out, I don't know, or whatever, and then get ready to go back to the back to the factory. We just need a librarian now. <laughs> it's true. It was an easy job though. It was nice. I don't know. Like it, it was uh it was not high paying, right? I wasn't paying any bills. Like the the foam factory paid bills and then like the library was like fun money. It was basically how that worked. Um on that note though, I just realized what time it is. And I have been pushing ads off for a while. So I think what we should do right now is maybe raid into somebody and call it a night here. Time to get a watch. Um, uh, Suna's playing Spirit City? What's Suna doing? Chill work stream, gotta write that lore. Do we want to go harass Suna? I think we should screech at Suna. Because apparently he's trying to work. And I think that would be a good idea is to stop him from doing that. Oh, and Ammonia's already in there. Let's let's raid Suna, why not? I can't just write in Suna. It doesn't know who I'm talking about. Um oh, I don't know, it's about Emperor. Okay, what do we want to yell at him though? Something distracting. What, why don't we, um, 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 call him a good girl. Just, like, everyone keep calling him a good girl. No matter what you do, just keep, keep calling him a good girl. For, like, the next ten minutes, please, for me. But I will see you guys, um, Tuesday? During the day. Day stream. So I will see you guys then. In the meantime, call Suna a good girl for me. And have a wonderful night. Bye-bye, good girl, Ray, go!